Good morning. Okay, I've decided to make another uh, short video here as uh, another follow-up uh, to my initial video and to the first first update that I posted last. Um, I've decided to mix up another type of solution for the ultrasonic cleaner and to give it a try and see how it what the results might be. Um, I'll, I'll give you the formula if it works. <laughs> if it doesn't work, then uh, it not, nothing much lost. Um, I've got the ultrasonic cleaner on right now. You can see it in the background. And um, I, I, it, it has a timer on it, so you can only run it for about, uh, I think, uh, almost 500 seconds, which is what? Uh, th that's a few minutes. So probably need to run it a couple cycles like 10 minutes or so and then I've got a um, I've got a bucket of clear water uh, in the background too you can see it there there's a bucket of clear water in the background so I'll after I run the parts I'll um, I'll dip them in the in the fresh water and just blow them off with some air uh, I think uh, here I'll, I'll probably turn the um, turn the compressor on and um, shut the camera off right now and uh, I'll bring it, bring you back when uh, after they've run about 10 minutes or so. Mo mostly I'm trying to clean the uh, right now the clock is sort of back together I took all the nuts off that I could the nuts and washers that's the main thing I want to try to clean because there some of those are really bad and uh, let's see if this solution does the trick I put the clock wheels in there too um, first third second third fourth wheels in there and uh, see if those clean up a little bit better too if this works um, I'll take the the winding barrels out of the clock and clean those they need cleaned and there's some other nuts and washers that need clean so um, hopefully this this works uh, so I won't have to do it by hand maybe the solution will clean the brass up well enough that uh, that it's presentable so uh, at that uh, I'll, I'll shut the camera off now and bring you back in a few minutes so maybe maybe about 15 minutes okay I'm back it's been a while um, to say the least I had to leave the shop and and uh, run a few errands um, for a couple hours so anyway I'm back I uh, the new solution that I tried um, it didn't didn't work very well um, somebody that um, that uh, cleans bullet casings um, recommended it but um, I, I didn't find it worked or worth a darn so um, I tried some other solutions in the meantime they didn't work either so I'm back to my old standby and it seems to work best um, I'm putting some of the stuff back in the ultrasonic cleaner uh, the ultrasonic cleaner I, I don't know is it it does anything if the if the items are clean but um, it it it's able to heat the water or heat the solution so I think that that helps a little bit so right now I've taken uh, some of the bearing caps off and put them in there and I got a I got more to go but I don't want to get them mixed up I've marked them and uh, I noticed that it's some things are pretty delicate to say the least I kind of forgot what I'd done but one of the main arbors that goes that which is the center arbor um, that arbor you know I must have put it in the lathe and and um, polished the two ends of it to fit the bearings and the middle of it's a little bit bigger it's just one thousandth of an inch but um, uh, so that 
the middle part fits the the wheel that goes there and and the two ends fit the pivot so um, well, the only way to put it in place is to put it in place uh, when the plates are apart. Anyway, um, I did that. Actually, the wheels are looking pretty good now. There's a reddish um, stuff that's on there. I, I don't know why. It, uh, it, you know, it's a, what do you call it? It's, a, it, it's tarnished, right? But they, they look pretty good. They're very presentable now. Then they, so uh, let me zoom in on, you know, the plates. So they're very presentable right now. And um, I don't know, let me turn the viewer around so I can see here. So um, this, is, this is one that I may at one point or another, I've got the lights on, I don't know if that's visible or not. At one point or another I may have uh, used some semi-chrome on this one, I don't know. But see, there, you can see some little spots on it that the, the the solution won't remove. Um, there are little tarnish spots. I know I could take them off with some semi-chrome, but um, I really didn't want to have to do that. Um, I put this this part that holds the pendulum in there, and it actually cleaned it up pretty nice. It still has some of that reddish on the top there, but the uh, knurled wheel and stuff cleaned up pretty good. And even the there were some rust type corrosion on the steel and that 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 seemed to go away too so that's pretty good I'm satisfied with it not bad um, some of the other wheels um, they look a lot better you can still see you know little little spots on there um, and those are obviously tarnished but basically these little wheels cleaned up pretty good so I'm happy and of course they're nice and clean now the pinions are all clean and the bearings are all clean uh, where the bearings are and uh, you can see pretty good I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with all of them they all came out just about the same not perfect but uh, you know not shiny they're dull looking but they, they have the little this has a lot of little spots on it but um, basically it's pretty clean and and um, it's it's presentable at least so I put I got all the little screws also that I've been putting in there with taking the bearing caps off and and marking them and and so I got one two three I think three bearing caps in there now in the ultrasonic cleaner so um, that's where I'm at uh, this seems to be working. This solution that I'm using now is I've been using for I don't know um, maybe uh, <laughs> 40, 50 years. I don't know. It's a long time. And um, it, years ago, when I was a young man, so that was probably about uh, at least more than 50 years ago. I um, I attended a school called the Chicago School of Watchmaking, and um, you you go through all these course steps, and you end up with a diploma, and you learn to repair watches. Um, you learn to completely disassemble them, make parts for them from scratch. And I have a couple of watchmakers' lathes. Um, in a box around here. I actually don't use them anymore, but um, that uh, at that time um, in in the course study um, there was a solution that um, We made to clean watches and a procedure that we went through and I won't go through all that right now but basically I've, I use this solution and it's um, It's just it's simple. It's tin it's called tinct tincture of green soap, I think. So you use a small amount of that and um, some water and some uh, some acetone, maybe or maybe not, and some ammonia. And then, um, of course, with the watches, we had like a seven 
jar method. So <laughs> we went through um, some solvent and some distilled water and a whole bunch of different things. And uh, that's before they had uh, watch, watch electric watch cleaning machines and all ultrasonic machines and all that. So it was a by hand method. We strung all the parts on a little piece of wire and dipped them from place to place. Anyway, um, so I've been using that solution for all these years and um, it's not necessarily made to clean brass but it it seems to so it seems to clean quite well and and um, it cleans up some of the tarnish on the brass so um, you need to leave it in the solution for a while I found out I kind of forgot that because we never did that with watches I don't think but but um, even back then they had electric um, watch cleaning machines uh, actually now that I think about it but uh, that was 50 years ago and I've been using this solution ever since so um, I don't remember the exact breakdown I'd have to look back but I have some some amounts that I've sketched on a piece of paper that have been hanging up here in the shop for a long time and and um, so that's what I go by I just mix it up in a half gallon jar and dump it in the, the ultrasonic. So anyway, that's what I'm doing. I'm cleaning parts and um, I'm probably going to keep doing that um, for a while here to make sure I get all the parts cleaned and I've decided to, to take the bearing housings off and, and whatever else and even the nuts and washers, I'm able to get those clean. Some of the nuts um, that were on the top of the, of the clock um, on one side they really they're really badly tarnished um, that that isn't coming off they're still a little reddish colored uh, but but most of them clean up pretty well I I don't know I think everything in this clock is 360 brass so I think the brass is all the same but uh, for some reasons some of it cleans up differently than others and it's got something to do with the makeup of the brass even though it's all the same um, 360 but um, may maybe for some reason it's not or there's some there's some differences in the way it's it's made um, the 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 brass the brass nuts were made from a piece of uh, of uh, round stock piece of round dowel and um, it was flattened on on six sides and and parted off to make the nuts and threaded so um, it was also a piece of uh, 360 brass but it wasn't plate see so it was a different different procedure in the manufacturing procedure for the brass and it seems to make a difference um, not sure why I don't think it actually should but it does anyway so that's that I'll call off now and uh, just a short quick video um, so talk to you later. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.